about how to plot a bar plot or a bar chart using ggplot. This is one of the most common plots which is used in um, in any 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 document or any statistical work. So let's get started. I'll open a new R script. I'm using R Studio. So we would need two packages. If you don't have have them, you can run these scripts to install them. But since I've already installed those packages, so I'm just calling them by library ggplot and library ggthemes. Themes provide us a number of extra themes, um, which comes with, um, um, there are some inbuilt themes which comes with ggplot, but there are some additional themes which come from ggthemes as well. So let's let's use both of them. The, the plot, the, the libraries first, and then you should be able to see what MPG does. Um, a better way of that would be to just view it on the screen in a better way. This is R Studio specific, so if you have R Studio, you can view it uh, that way. So it has a manufacturer, model, displacement, etc. So manufacturers, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six number of Audis, and then Chevrolet and Dodge. So let's say if you just wanted to plot how many um, manufacturers cars are available in this starter set. So I can write a simple ggplot. So in this simple bar plot, I just want to use manufacturer on the x-axis and we simply want to have a count of how many rows we have for each manufacturer. So using ggplot, we say that data equals MPG and the AES X equals manufacturer. That means we want to use the manufacturer column. And then we are using John bar. So John bar would automatically do a count and then hopefully plot um, a, a bar chart, which is going to show the count for each manufacturers. So here we go. We have a basic plot. And if I zoom it up on the screen, you can see that it has simply counted number of Audis, number of Chevrolets, number of Dodges, etc. in our chart. We didn't have to define what is the y-axis because John Bar, by its very nature, uses each row and then simply does a count of that. So this is one way of um, remembering the John Bar. Let's start customization of this plot to make it more useful. I wanted to have a title, which is my title, subtitle equals my subtitle, caption equals my caption. And I want to call X axis as car brand and Y as count. And I'll, for the time being, I'll remove this line. Here we go. We have a, a better looking chart now with a title at the top, a subtitle at the bottom, and a caption at uh, the right hand side and the title for the x-axis is car brand and we have a y-axis title as well which is count now is the time to use a built-in theme So one of the built-in themes within ggplot is themes pw. I'll use that. And you can see that your plot has actually changed nicely. And there are a number of themes which you can use, um, and they are all part of uh, ggplot package. We also have um, the ggthemes library, which we used. We can make use of the additional themes as well which comes with that and one of the themes is um, the themes economist which is not from ggplot but from ggthemes and that's why i've written ggthemes in the front you don't really have to write it but it's just for distinction that um, for you to know that this has actually come from ggthemes and not from ggplot
okay our plot has changed to a different variant now and this is from the theme economist if i was to replace this john bar by john bar stat equals count it actually means the same thing this is telling you that i'm actually using the statistics which is the count of of the of each row uh, and then simply counting how many manufacturers of each type or each each uh, brand. This is um, the same thing as giving John Bar. To make it more clear, I'm simply typing stat equals count so that um, you know what's happening behind the scenes. And if I plot it, you would come up with the same chart. It's simply counting the, the thing. So this is the default behavior of, of Jombar. It simply counts the number of rows <clears throat> and then finds out whatever is your variable and simply does a frequency count of that and then uses that in the, in the chart. Now, what if you wanted to flip the X and Y coordinates? Yes, we can do that. And the way to do that is to actually use a command which is available in ggplot and there are a number of commands which are available in ggplots and sometimes it's hard to remember them all but the easiest way i found is just type it out as ggplot2 and you would notice that ggplot2 and if i don't remember a command i can go through that uh, browse through that and you would be able to pick what you need um, and i'm looking for coordinate flip in this case so yeah and that that completes our um, statement in, uh, in in the script so let's run it and see the difference now okay so the chart has flipped and you notice that um, the adjustment on the axis has changed the, the text has gone bit into the into the system so because we have switched uh, the, the the plot to X, the the x-axis has become y-axis and the y-axis has become the x-axis so we might have to change this as instead of vertical justification as horizontal justification and let's see what it does for us okay that sounds good um, because we have flipped our uh, chart so we have to remember to flip our justifications also in this case we have converted from a v just from a vertical justification to h just which is a horizontal justification Next, I would like to add a line chart in the same figure as well. So the simplest way would be to actually add a command for jom line, similar to jom bar. So it's jom line stat equals count. Now let's see, would it behave the same way as jom bar or slightly differently? Let's run this command and see. Okay, we have a a problem here John path saying group consists of only one observation and the easiest way to fix that is by giving a statement saying group equals one so if you run it you would have a, a nice line showing up as well similarly you can bring a, a jump point as well in this so you can plot a dot as well remember in in, in jom point we don't have to worry about uh, group equals one it's only for jom line that we have to worry about putting a group equals one statement in this case and remember there's only one thing which we can use um, and that is the count of the manufacturers so everywhere we are using count we are actually getting a count of the manufacturer so it's the chart is essentially representing the same thing. The dot is saying the same thing, the bar is saying the same thing, and the line is saying the same thing. And that is the count for each manufacturer. For example, 27, the dot represents 27, the line also represents 27, and the bar also represents 27. There are different ways of handling different variables as well, multiple variable bar charts as well, which we will talk about a bit later. And what if I wanted to have a different color for the for the line? I can do that by giving a color statement. Color 
equals red or C O L O R or C O L O U R both work to the same thing. And I'll prove that by giving another color command in the point as well. So there I'm going to use a different spelling of color as C O L O U R. And let's see what the result is. Okay. So the result is that both of them have changed to red color now. Let me zoom it up. Okay, let's bring another variable into this chart so that we are able to distinguish the manufacturers by by the class of the of the car. Let, let's review the, the data set first so that we know what class means. So for the same manufacturer, there are different kind of classes, compact, midsize, and SUV and two seaters. So using that, we would like to represent that in our chart. So one the easiest way would be to use a fill statement in the AES. So remember it has to be within the AES. So you say fill equals class. And let's see what happens next. Okay, so we have a number of colored bar charts, each representing different class of the of the cars out of the total cars. But before we go any further into this, let's simplify this chart by commenting out the line point and the text and also the flip. Instead of deleting it, you can simply comment it by putting a um, hash in the front so that you can bring it back any, at any point of time. Okay, our charts look better now. On zooming, we can see that the count, the total count actually gets split into the, the number of um, cars which have the, which they have in each class. For example, in Audi, you have the midsize and then you have compact. So Audi has more compacts compared to the midsize. Similarly, some of them have three, some of them are like four different classes of the car. Now, as you can see, the text is um, garbled now. Let's fix it up by bringing the angle command back. So my inclination would be to put this statement at the end and let's see what happens. So all I'm saying is x is dot text dot x. The element text should be rotated by 90 degrees. So I want this to be rotated by 90 degrees. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the, uh, the axis has uh, rotated the text by 90 degrees. It sounds good, but the position of that is very important. If I cut it up and put it before this line, so now we are saying the same things, but we are saying it at different point of time. We are saying first that the angle should be changed to 90 degree. And then I'm saying my theme is the theme economist. The problem is that the moment I give this, the theme economist gets the pre precedence. So it overrides all the settings which you have done at the top. So I tend to bring the the theme function first and then define all my other variables after that. So let's see what happens now. Our text won't rotate because we told the text to rotate by 90 degree, but after that we brought this statement. And that's the very common mistake which people would make when defining the theme. So all I have to do is bring this line just after the after the introduction of the of the theme and it should work properly so this chart which we have created is is a is a stacked bar chart but what if we wanted to convert this into a 100% stacked bar chart so that each bar is representing 100% and then within the each bar each section of that would represent the percentage instead of the actual count. So it's quite easy to achieve that. All you have to do is within the jom bar itself, you have to put position equals fill. 
and suddenly our bar chart has changed. You can see that every bar occupies 100% of the area and instead of the count it has changed to percentage. So, so if I change this to percentage you can appreciate that it actually totals to 1 which is 100%. Let's also change the label to make more sense out of the percentage and that can be achieved by using another library called or a package called scales. If you don't have it you can install it and after installing the package you can simply call it So this command scale by continuous labels equals scale percent changes this axis into a, into a percentage uh, label. So let's see the effect of that. So let me run or load the package first and then I'll run a script. Okay, now it makes more sense. You can see that each bar occupies 100% and then the scale also is in alignment with um, with that. So it's 100% and the label has been changed as well. So it's, it's looking good. Now, what if we wanted to have the, the, the each bar side by side instead of a stack bar? And that can be achieved by assigning the position within the John bar statement itself. So over there, I can say position equals position dodge. So this is the way you define position dodge. And if I run it, you would see how the bar transforms. Okay, each bar has been placed next to each other. But notice we have a problem. With Honda, there is only one class of car which they are making. So the bar, the subcompact bar is much larger compared to small ones. So if there are three bars, three bars fill up the, the whole vertical x, the, the, the whole um, x-axis, and if there's only one, it's, it's still. So the it looks very ugly because the size has changed. You can appreciate with four bars within the same size and with one bar and two, it's very difficult to comprehend the the chart. Fixing this problem is very simple. All we have to do is put a statement within the position dodge as preserve equals single. Let's run it and see the difference. Yeah, it seems to be fixed now. There's another way of handling position dodge and that's position dodge two. And there's a slight difference in that. And position dodge two actually centers the all the bars within the central axis. You can see that they are a bit offset. So if there's only one single bar, it still starts from the, the, the position on the extreme left and then starts building it up. For example, if there are four, char four bars, then this seems to be all right. But if there's only one or two bars, then they still start from the position, the first, the first bar's location. Position dodge two slightly changes that. And now you can see that each bar, whether it's one bar or four bars, they are actually equally positioned across the, the, those those notches. So I personally prefer this kind of uh, chart compared to the previous. So position dodge two does that for us. Let me zoom it up so that you can appreciate the difference. One bar is cent uh, centered on, on on the notch. Even if there are four bars, they are still centered around the notch. Two on the left and two on the right. And if there's three, then you have one in the center and one on the left and one on the right. So that's what uh, position dodge two does for us. So with this, we come to the end of this video. In this video, we have learned how to create a basic bar chart and how to customize the theme and also int introduce various elements of the chart and then placing them on, on the chart. We learned about the stack bar chart, 100% stack bar chart, and the side-by-side -side bar chart. Please support us by subscribing to our channel and see you in the next video. Thank you.